Welcome everyone to the alt new build the flower snapdragon flower. This one has quite a few layers and it is amazing. So this video is going to be a little bit longer because I actually want to show how I did struggle a bit with getting the layers to match the die cut. And, and you'll see why in a little bit. I've been playing quite a bit and you can see there's a pamphlet as always, has a stamping guide and has some, some ideas with ink colors. But here was the dilemma is the, the stem of the stamp is separate from the flower. So I tended to get that off. I normally am a stamper first and then a die cutter. But you know what? This is my very first time doing a die cut first from the white cardstock and then stamping. So I wanted to just show how easy it was and then it made this super, super simple. It actually made it easier to line up because when you're lining up these layered stamps, if you're not familiar with them, it's a lot like doing your die cuts. You you move it around you, you and you use that guide too. That guide is, is so handy. But you move it around and then you just see where it just lines up perfectly. So this is how this one flower, there's two different flowers. This one I believe is the larger flower. This one has a lot more leaves at the bottom, as you can see right there. So yeah, the die, having it die cut ahead of time, actually I was very surprised. I, I did not think I would be able to line up a stamp onto a die cut, but I have to say the stamping tool really does help. Now here, here's some of the many layers to this. It's amazing the details you can get with these layers. There's this teeny, teeny, tiny stamp of green from the stem that's right in kind of the center of that flower. And again, you know, stamp it out a few times and then you see exactly where it goes. You finally get it and you line it up just perfectly. So give, you, give yourself a little bit of grace. I know I always need it because I always goof up on these at first. I have to do a few trial runs and then it's easier for me. Now I wanted to show the smaller flower, the bottom part especially, because the leaves were definitely so much easier to stamp with the die cut already. What I'm going to do is a traveler's notebook spread in my album that I have here using the happy planner rings. I have a large photo that I trimmed that I want to use, but I want to use some of the reflections pattern paper. I'm pulling colors from the photo, kind of that pantina that, because it's a fountain, she's, my daughter's standing by a fountain, so I want some of that color. So that's how that right side is going to begin. But I really want to get creative with this stamp set and not just use the stamped and die cut flowers. I really want to create a fun watercolor background. And again, it goes with the photo with, her, with my daughter standing next to the water fountain. So what I'm doing is I started with the stencil first and added some light pink. And now I'm just going to randomly stamp some of the layers. I'm not going to line them up. I just want the movement. I, that's what I think I love the most about this stamp set is the stems and the flowers have so much movement to them. So that's kind of what I'm capturing as I'm seeing how I want to stamp on this background. I'm just going to pick some favorites and I'll have the colors listed on my blog that I'm using. But again, I'm pulling colors that would really complement and go well with that photo. Now I believe I picked a pale pink here and then I ended up going back with a darker pink. I wanted a little bit more of a contrast. So once I have everything stamped out, I have a really good background started. I love all the flowers and the stems coming in from the sides of my page so far. Very pretty, such a pretty stamp set. And that darker shade of pink really did help it pop a little bit more there. Just gonna finish this off with a little bit more. I had to use these leaves. I love the leaves. I love the stamp set used this way. And the leaves just really made this pop. I used the, I believe this was the emerald color that I used to really, really make them stand out. And now I'm ready to add some watercoloring to this background. I'm using 
the inks, the dye-based inks, because they mix so well with water. And what I'm doing is I'm using my water bottle. Instead of spritzing it, I'm dipping my brush into it and then adding the water to that acrylic block with the ink pad that I have pressed onto it. And then I am not getting specific to like purposely color in the exact area of anything that I have stamped. I am randomly going along some of the leaves first with this beautiful color. I can't, I can't remember the exact name. I think this was paper bag. I love this color. And I wanted to just add a little bit of that over the leaves. Gives it a nice random look. A random watercolor. I love that whole watercolor look. But if you're familiar with watercoloring, then you know that the more water you add to your ink, you'll get that more translucent watery look. And then if you let your work dry a little bit, and then if you were to take your, your brush and just dip it in water once and go directly to your fresh ink, you'll get a darker color. For example, here I'm pressing the ink pad and if I were to just dip my brush once, pick it up, I would have a heavier coverage of that color. It really adds a nice layer to that. So you can always experiment. Watercoloring is really just about experimenting. And that's exactly what I'm doing here with this beautiful shade. I love this color. I added a whole lot of water to this because I didn't want it to take over of the dark emerald green or that that paper bag color that I have that caramel kind of color I wanted it to really be in the background but I wanted it to be seen so I'm also dipping my brush into it to do some splatters to finish that off love that and I you did see that I pulled in the photo I'm really trying to get inspiration from that photo but I also got inspiration from that reflections paper with the rose that I used you'll see that again in a little bit I ended up covering on the right side some of that pattern paper, actually a lot of that pattern paper. I really love the flowers, so I wanted those to, uh, and like I said, I do love the movement of them, so I wanted them draped along that right side, and that is such a busy photo, and I felt like it really helped to bring focus to my daughter beside that fountain and the, so many trees in the background. I'm going to get everything placed the way that I want it. And here's that rose from the pattern paper. I needed something at the bottom of those stems on the right side. I needed to cover it up and I wanted something that was not too, too busy. I wanted it to complement everything. And that was perfect way is to just fussy cut from that same pattern paper and layer that on top. And I want to use some of those same darker colors. I'm going to use those on the left side. So once I get it all in place, I will do some regular adhesive tape runner. And then I'll foam adhere some of this to create some dimension to it. And then that will finish this up. What I'll do next is I'll add my sentiment. I use two of the sentiments. There's three sentiments on this. I use two of them to create a... a I pretty much built a title onto it. You'll see that in a little bit in the photos. And then I added in some of the chipboard and some of the embellishments from the Live Your Dream scrapbook collection. You can see here what I added. See that Hello Darling and then the sentiment under it. I just love that. So the watercolor look just came out so nice because you're going over the stamped that the stamped images that that are in the dye base so it just creates even more of a watercolor look. Now I was in that watercolor mode or mood so I wanted to keep going and I needed some tags. I needed some tags for uh, teacher appreciation is coming up and Mother's Day as well. So what I'm doing is I'm using my gel press. I press the ink pad into it, spritzed with water and just pressed once the tags into it and it creates such a pretty background. Now what I'm doing is I'm stamping onto the gel press just one of the images of the Snapdragon and then pressing that tag into it. it. Gives it a whole unique look, I love that. You could also spritz that if you wanted a little bit more of a watercolor look, which I tried, but I actually liked it better this way. Now I wanna add some more contrast to this with this pink color and 
a more detailed image of that same flower. And then I'm going to really add, I want to add a really strong contrast here with the stem going inside. What's fun about this is it's similar to the watercolor page that I did for the Traveler's Notebook is that it's it's not lining in it lining the image up and it just goes to show how beautiful you can really make this set look so i hope this is inspiring you to give this stamp set a try thank you so much for watching